You are going to see planes that fly without pilots. We're a little scary about change because it's the unknown. Civil libertarians, frankly, have a right to be concerned about privacy. I think this is not only the coming industry, it's already here. The new pilotless plane, the drone. When you hear the word drone, you may immediately think of bombs being dropped in the Middle East or the surveillance of citizens here in the United States. But aviation geeks and engineers have wondered for decades if unmanned flight might solve a few of our world's problems or make our lives a little easier. For the last 50 years, science magazines marveled over drones sniffing out pollution, taking photos from the air, or making pilots obsolete. There she goes. The new pilotless plane, the drone. You may not know it, but the military used drones decades ago. Here's a closer look at this amazing reconnaissance robot recently tested at Fort Huachuca. Called the drone, it is designed to carry photographic equipment or a TV camera. Drones like this one paved the way for the new, albeit questionable, world of robotic warfare in the Middle East. Now, unmanned aerial system technology is a regular part of the military's day-to-day -day operations. <laughs> Unmanned aircraft have been, it's a technology that's been evolving and there's been quite a lot of attention uh, really throughout the whole history of aviation. John Villasenor is a professor of electrical engineering and public policy at UCLA and a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution. What has changed in the last, let's call it, decade or so is that the combination of advances in electronics and of course the availability of the GPS system uh, and advances in airframe design and flight control methods and things like that have made it very possible to build very inexpensive unmanned aircraft and thereby to make them with an easy reach of pretty much anybody who wants them. So the technology has now reached the point where it, it can be very inexpensive to buy one. I bought this drone on Amazon.com and even though it can't fly high into the atmosphere, it demonstrates the availability Via Senor talks about. <laughs> We think that the unmanned uh, vehicles are coming into civilian use and they're going to be a tremendous benefit to civilian society. I think this is not only the coming industry, it's already here. This is a symposium at a hotel in Thousand Oaks, California. It's just one of the many public discussions happening right now across the United States about drones. The potential of UAVs benefiting mankind in firefighting, in agriculture, pollution, uh, stopping all kinds of loss of life because we were able to send a remote vehicle in of a human life into that is amazing. There's applications for movie making, for real estate, uh, for inspecting the roof of a very large factory structure. Agricultural monitoring, fisheries monitoring, severe weather monitoring, uh, hydrology and water management. There's a lot of things that you can do with these uh, vehicles. Meet Sandra Magnus. She's the executive director of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And are you ready for this? A former astronaut. But in order to use them appropriately, you have to figure out how to integrate them into the national airspace. You also have to figure out how you're going to operate and what your policy should be. And so today, we have in the symposium representatives from the policy world, the sensor world, the consumer world, the people who have experience already using these unmanned systems. And so it's a way to have a dialogue across the whole community to make sure we're thinking of all the right things and moving in the right direction together. As a part of the Federal Aviation Administration's reauthorization of funds in February 2012, Congress passed a bill that included the integration of unmanned aircraft into U.S. airspace by 2015. First for public entities like law enforcement or firefighters, and second for civilians like farmers or filmmakers, giving some companies the confidence to hit the ground running. This is one of the drone dudes, and he's giving this drone one last checkup before it takes flight in downtown Los Angeles. Drone Dudes is a two-year-old company of young filmmakers and engineers who specialize in low-level aerial filmmaking. They're a small operation, but have found a steady business shooting sporting events across the United States. Today, they're shooting skateboarders skating down the 6th Street Bridge. While the idea of flying robots with cameras hovering above the earth might make you a little uneasy, Drone enthusiasts think companies like Drone Dudes could be the future of drone technology in America. So we think it's kind of the next great thing like the, the internet and, uh, and the wireless technology and the interconnectivity we all have now with our smart devices. But it's not as if you can't misuse those technologies. Unmanned aircraft are like many other technologies in the, ha in the sense that they have many beneficial applications, but uh, they can also be misused. Uh, and of course, we see that with mobile phones, we see that with the internet, we've seen that with cameras. When roll, camera roll film first became inexpensive and easy to get, 
In the late 1800s, there was a, quite a lot of, of concern about the privacy implications of, of photography. Human beings, I think, our very natures, we're a little scary about change because it's the unknown. But we're explorers, too. And so we're constantly balancing that tension between Mm, what's the unknown like? And then part of us yearn to go into the unknown. And this is all the debate you hear about the use of unmanned vehicles on both sides. Is you're seeing that tension played out. Well, I think civil libertarians, frankly, have a right to be concerned about privacy. I think I think there are privacy concerns. I think to deny uh, that unmanned aircraft raise you know raise the, will will in some cases be used in a manner that violates privacy. That that wouldn't yeah you know, that would be overly naive. It will happen. If a government operator of an unmanned aircraft violates the Fourth Amendment, then obviously then that's unconstitutional and, and, and you know, that would be a problem. And then for non-government operators, there are invasion of privacy statutes. So for example, uh, if someone were to take an unmanned aircraft and fly it just outside your second floor window and you know take photographs into the interior of your home, that's you know really, if it was done without permission, it's clearly an invasion of, of, of privacy. I also think it's important uh, for people with an interest in civil liberties and everyone else um, to look at it on the other side as operators of unmanned aircraft because we have, we have all of us an affirmative First Amendment right to gather information. So unmanned aircraft um, in the hands of, of people who are gathering information, which include people in the, in the news media and others, uh, can be v uh, very powerful tools just like cameras are today, uh, obviously provided that they're used you know, with respect uh, for people's privacy and so on. Technology is a tool and you have to be mindful how you use it. But we can't let our fear keep us from reaping the benefits of our brains, which is where the technology comes from. While most drone use has been limited to police and other state agencies, the FAA recently approved two drones for civilian use, which could fly as early as 2013. For Reason TV, I'm Paul Dietrich.